Captain, I am receiving. Captain, I shall now play the transmission I received from Dr. Wells. Thank the Lord you warned me. I was able to get some defenses up, but they might not be enough. The board has sent some serious firepower to pry me out of here. They're trying to get in here, and I'm not sure I can stop them. If they capture me, if we can't communicate again, there's something very important you need to remember. The board, all their lackeys, they're all a bunch of swine. Do you hear me? They're fucking corporate swine. You fucking pigs! I'll take you all out with me! I'll never... It would seem the recording captured some rather dire events. I presume you'll want to dock at the orbital lab to check on your associate as soon as possible? How can I be of assistance? Well then. I'll be here. I mean, he asked me to do it. Idiot. We've arrived at Phineas's orbital lab. Oh boy. Are you serious, dude? Well, at least Bubbles is okay. All right, the passcode has got to be somewhere. I didn't read what was on the terminal, but it's leading me this way, so let's go. Please, would you kindly inform the crew that long- Captain, as it appears we may soon be embarking for a maximum security prison planet, I believe the crew would like to speak with you to, as you humans put it, air some concerns. Great. Well, folks, I ain't exactly keen on busting into a prison. But riddling board stooges with bullets does sound like a ride and a half. I never got to know Doc Wells. We ain't friends or crew. But he's still one of us. He's the reason the boss is up and walking right now. We can't just leave him to die in Tartarus. To extract the scientist, you will need to infiltrate the labyrinth. But that course of action is likely to be quite dangerous, Captain. I am programmed to warn you whenever you exhibit inclinations toward risky behavior. Breaking into Tartarus will not be easy. Let's just do it. Kick down some doors, grab Doc Wells, and cut a path out. We don't need a plan. We got guns. Exactly. If you really mean to do this, you should see to your final affairs I can just intimidate and everyone. any unfinished business. Once you sneak into Tartarus, you may be there a while. Or permanently. I see, I see. We gonna prepare? Sure. Guess I could give my ass-kicking boots another coat of polish. You got some sort of plan in mind? The fewer folks we got to hurt, the better. Maybe on our way out, we let all those poor souls locked up in there go free. Sure, boss. You do the talking. I'll pack a few more rounds of ammo. Alright. Alright, so I should go... 
the shop, get some ammo, and then it'll be all good. It will be all fine. Captain, I hope Dr. Wells has not dragged you into one of his era uh, it's just, you know, saving the whole colony and whatnot, nothing crazy. Uh, alright, so I'm gonna go with Groundbreaker. We're gonna get a shop and we'll sell some stuff. Maybe get some ammo and then... Should be good. That seems alright. Could probably do it with even more ammo, but it's fine. A pretty sick sword. Intruders will be up. All right, let's go save them. I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. Soon to be one. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain's ID with me, in the event that you do not return. Understood. If you die or are incarcerated for life, I can generate a new ID for the next Captain. I would prefer if you return, though. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. Damn. I'm sorry, you people? Did you just cast a generalization on upstanding UDL employees? That's a fine of 200 bits. You're up to 5,708, not including the cost of your execution and the disposal of your remains, which will be assessed posthumously. Huh? Oh, yes, sir, right away, sir. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought. can see you clearly before. Screen's on the fritz. Damn thing. But for the record, now that I hear you, I totally recognize you. Totally. <laughs> You're, um, you, of course. Obviously. Anyway, Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that. Just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. How can I be of assistance? Talk to you later, Ada. I require a functioning captain to run the ship. Yeah. I do. Alright. Back to the access. The captain did right oh. What's one. that noise? What was that? The board will never go wrong. Not while I'm oh. green. Push on, Marga! Somebody talk with the guard. Alright. I'll just oh god. Wait, can I wait for them to catch up? being damaged here? Dude, I'm just standing still. Yeah, there we go. Okay. As long as I don't run and I talk to everyone, I should be fine. 
to the prison has for bars when it's kind of storm like that, Garden Gates. I've got to admit, I'm not too keen on walking into a prison. They lock me up. I'm liable to kill everyone to get back out. Shooting to do, Captain. No, we have no shooting to do. Just talking our way out of things. Safe way. Sealed. Well, look who it is. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. I had heard you'd taken a mechanic under your wing. What's the matter, girl? Couldn't find actual employment? The captain's treated me right. Better than any of you board folk ever have. I'm exactly where I want to be. Ah, uh, I knew I smelled monarch when you lot walked in. The stench of sulfur, depression, and desperate bravado is unmistakable. Keep talking, and you'll be smelling iron. Ain't nobody so important I won't put a bullet in. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. My word! You've correctly identified the most recognizable <laughs> man in the colony. Remarkable. Thank you. It's a wonder what Phineas saw in you. Then again, he's an insane person. Thankfully, he's our insane person now. A proper company man. All right, I mean, we're not going to get into a fight here. Can I just take him out? All right. All right, we're doing well. I don't know if I'm that reset my conversation levels. Probably not. I'll probably get to the middle before it runs out. have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. You've been working with Dr. Wells from the beginning. Well, of when course. we moved to arrest him, he was prepared. I lost good soldiers in the attempt. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. I'm afraid I can't do that. Of course you can. I'm aware of your diplomatic talents, Captain. Oh, thank you. You have a gift for manipulation, but I warn you. Oh, I get for persuading. I'm no easy mark. For all your talents, you are the enemy of Halcyon, and therefore you are my enemy. All right. I have no intention of dying on Tartarus, Captain. Not when there's so much work left to do. I admit I miscalculated the extent of your influence. The board's plan never accounted for you. This is a mistake I intend to correct. I have Dr. Wells in my custody. Once I've secured his cooperation, I can move forward with the program. I can repair the damage you've done. I can set things right. Well, that's mostly correct. You're not leaving here at all. Well, we'll see about that one, won't we? I take no pleasure in this, you know. I'm sure you I don't. I simply have no other option. Leaving you alive is too great a risk. Goodbye, Captain. Bye. If you insist... This prison is equipped with an auto Yeah, we get it. And I don't really care, but that's when she's a psycho. Oh, there goes my legs again. All right, let's see. Unexpected performing and no. All right, just had to confirm that I couldn't talk to a robot. <laughs>
Uh, I have a grenade launcher that I could probably take out. Hey, help here. Don't know if there's grenades in it though. I am a soul. Oh, don't go down. Oh my god, there's a lot of enemies here now. The team's down. Alright, alright, alright. Chill. Oh, I'm down. I'm down. I am not surviving. I'm a charismatic person. I'm not a fighter. Drones are OP, man. Oh my god, what? How did I survive that? Alright, alright. I used a lot of my ammo. Now it's just me and the big boy. Oh my god, what? Oh my god. No! The grenade launcher even worth it? 400? No, probably not. Has no ammo. I'm running out of meds. You can hear the drones in there. What? Run, 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 run. I am dead. No, there's no salvaging this. There's too many. What? Oh. My team get up. Oh. Oh, and he has a key. Nice. That was actually quite tough. Why won't Whoa, relax. 
Oh. Oh. If. Well, <laughs> they got skill points. What do we want to get? Uh, let's get this to 70. And then let's keep getting this one up. Yeah. Guild. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind. And I can't begin to thank you enough. Ah! All in a day's work for you, huh? You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory. But we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hope's brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? Hell yeah. When I revived you, I thought you were going to help me save this colony. I was wrong. I had our roles reversed, you see. You're the one who's going to save us all. I'm just the one who set you on your path. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. 
some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Sanjar's civil liberties and worker-centric policies were slow to catch on with the other corporations. But as Halcyon began its long, arduous journey toward recovery, many of Terra 2's smaller townships started adopting MSI's alternative corporate structure and eventually became entirely self-sufficient. In the coming years, many of these townships managed to eke by where otherwise they might have starved. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide McDevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. Adelaide McDevitt refused to cooperate with the ongoing effort to save Halcyon from collapse. A sympathetic deserter stole a copy of her research and delivered it to the Hope's scientists. It is unclear how useful Adelaide's research was. An optimistic estimate suggests her work may have bought Halcyon another few years of survival. Adelaide would never know. She died that winter. Under the leadership of June Lay Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June Lay the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Melstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently as its chief and sole engineer. As hard as she tried to drink them away, Nyoka's memories eventually overcame her. Traveling with the crew served as a constant reminder of the family she'd lost, and so she eventually returned to Monarch to get back to what she found most comfortable, the deep end of a bottle and the far end of a trail. Few have seen her since, but travelers often swear they hear her and her machine gun in the night, screaming swears and spitting bullets. Before his untimely death, Captain Alex Hawthorne had plans to restore and modify, for combat purposes, a sanitation and maintenance auto-mechanical that he'd found in a state of disrepair in Emerald Vale's scrapyard. That unit remains broken down and forgotten in the unreliable supply closet to this day. Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, 
He threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you? the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon. Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. Alright, thanks everyone for watching. If you liked, hit that like button and subscribe. Peace.